This story gets deep and it might be a little bit long. I don't know if I'm going to release it in two parts or not. So... <laughs> ah! <laughs> I actually made a tape, I made a recording about this like 10 years ago. I didn't release it. I was going to put it on YouTube and I was like, no, nah, I didn't release it. And... More things have happened since then, but, um, <laughs> we can get into that down the line, but, um, so he is, um, gosh, here we go. Where do I start with this story? So I'm going to start from the beginning. He is something else. I'm not going to go like too long and too deep. I'm going to try to like get to like the, the interesting part. I'm going to get to the interesting part. So when I met him, I... Okay, so this starts off with the Satanic Bible by Antoine LaVey, which as, you know, if you looked into Antoine LaVey, he didn't actually believe in, they say, um, Lucifer or Satan as a real entity, but he just liked the concept of basically like narcissism, you know, putting yourself first, self-idolatry, the worship of self, right? It's a very vain religion. It's very selfish oriented, but that's how he looked at it. And... There are a lot of so many rituals and stuff like that. And so I was like, let me look into something more. Let me look into something that's like a little bit deeper. So I, I, I looked into something a little bit deeper. And then after that, um, some supernatural stuff happened right off the bat. And I'm going to save that story for another time. But some undeniable supernatural stuff happened, right? After this... I, you know, a couple years later, I got, like, really back into Christianity, reading the Bible, and hardcore in that gospel, but what happened is I had some trials and tribulations at my job that I was at. I basically got fired for absolutely no reason. I got humiliated in front of the coworkers. Somebody made up a lie about me. I got accused of something I didn't do, and they did it in a really mean way. And I'd already been at the job for like three years. It was like I was set up, and I was crying, and I was really upset, and they were kind of like laughing about it, the bosses, and it was just really evil the way the whole thing was playing out. But, you know, this is a setup. It's a trap. It is demonic, and they do do things like this. After that, my faith was really shaken up and it was really interesting. This guy on the street comes out of nowhere and comes up to me and says, God told me to tell you. And he starts praying with me and he gave me a prophetic message. Now, that was a big sign. But it was like when I went home, I got caught up in some other things and some other thinking. And some of it was through hearing certain music and seeing certain bands and certain home life things that were going wrong and being stressed out about finances now and having lack of faith. I didn't know that there was like a good amount of money that was coming to me. I didn't know about that stuff at the time. And so what happened was I was like, I don't want anything to do with Christianity. I'm going to go like full on into like Satanism. And I felt like that was the end. Now, how that transition happened is really amazing, but I will say the primary thing, the primary things that were used in this case was um, music, idolatry, really being into certain groups that heavily represented Satanism, promoted Satanism, musical groups, used a lot of, without explicitly saying they were Satanists, used like a lot of symbology and lyrics that heavily promoted it. And really dark and promoted satanic stuff, right? Period. And I started listening to that music over and over and over again. I started, again, having like lack of faith and stuff like that. And I felt like, okay, this is the way. So I got like into Satanism for a minute. It's kind of interesting. It was like magic. Within like three weeks, my entire life was completely different. I found myself in a new state, in a new relationship, in a whole new life. And it happened like a whirlwind. Like, now, at the time, I didn't put it together that this might have had to do with Satanism. I thought it was going in a good direction because if you get into Satanism, well, anyways, 
I thought I was going into a, a positive direction. I wasn't doing like rituals. It was more of, I don't want to say praying, but just like renouncing God and Christian faith and, you know, saying like, okay, I'm going to study Satanism and stuff like that. But here's where we get to the Lucifer part. And it's not that I'm scared to talk about this story, but I'm just like, holy cow. Yeah, it's a big story. So, um, one day I did a, I'm trying, being very, very careful on how I express this story because I don't want people to try it. And because this stuff is very real, I want to make sure that I'm very detailed, but at the same time that I'm putting out a positive message or a helpful message. So I'm not even sure if I'm ready to to share this story yet. I guess, let me see. Okay, let's get into it. So there's something that you can do where it's supposed to make him appear to you. Okay, I'll just say that much. And I did it. And um, I didn't expect it to work. I kind of thought it was a, a little bit of a joke. I kind of thought like, yeah, you know, nothing's going to really happen. Because the thing is, I had prayed to God and I'd asked Jesus to come to me and Jesus to appear and angels to appear. I did that numerous times from like the time I was really small. And nothing happened. You know, maybe every now and again, I might get a nice dream, but that was about it. So with this, I didn't expect anything to happen. I just thought it would just be like, well, that's not what happened. What happened is it was like, like a whirlwind, like a wormhole opening up. And yeah, I was like, I I lied in bed. I don't even think I was quite all the way asleep. And all of a sudden, I'm there in what looks like Mars. Or Saturn, it kind of more looked like Mars. And um, I know we haven't seen that, like, real pictures of, like, up close and personal, but what you would imagine it would look like. And there was this guy, and he was on a horse, and he was coming out riding towards me. And I remember feeling like, oh, my God, this is somebody I've been running from for a long time. Like, and he came towards me, and when he was coming towards me, there was a wind as he was coming towards me. And the music that was playing was so loud. There were like trumpets, lots and lots of trumpets. And it was extremely dark, dark, theatrical, like cinematic music, but much darker than anything I've heard in a movie. It was almost like where we get the inspirations from in those movies musically when we have really dark scenes. But this was like the source of it. Literally, his presence was so powerful that music was coming out of him, was emitting out of him as he was moving. And like I said, as he was moving, the wind was also coming with him. And he came towards me and looked at me. And I was pretty much like paralyzed in fear. I was just there like kind of probably like shaking and like, oh my God. His presence was about a thousand times the presence of an average person. So if anyone's like, oh, that's not real, or that was a hallucination, or no, no, no. That would be, his presence was like a thousand, maybe, like if you take what it feels like when you have, let's say, a thousand people next to you, or 10,000 people, it was like that much presence in one. He looked like he was tens of thousands of years old. I didn't know what that even looked like until I encountered him. He had all of these fine, fine, fine lines on his face. And it was weird because in certain lights at certain angles, he looked like he was maybe like 80, 90 years old. But in other turns and when the light hit him in certain ways, he looked like he was like tens of thousands of years old because all these fine, fine, fine wrinkles. Again, he was on a horse and he is a Nordic. He is a Nordic. And in fact, when I looked at his eyes, I was able to see that, oh, crap, he has a bloodline here. And I'll just leave that part of that. So he looked at me and he was pissed. Okay. He was really, really angry. And it was kind of like, to him, it was like a child, a child called upon, like, even though I wasn't, I was an adult. But to him, I was like a small, like child, like, he looked at it like, um, and all of this was telepathic communication. And so he looked at it like, oh, a small child. You know, I've dealt with pharaohs and people trying to take over the Roman Empire and all of these different things. And what do you want? Like, what, what, like he, 
he was like so surprised like because for the most part like i said i just wanted to see if it was real i just wanted some information on you know what all was going on and so what he did was he then looked at me he looked through me and as he looked through me i knew it was like he could dissipate me with a thought that was the power that he had he could dissipate me with a thought and i was like wow but things were a little bit different than I thought. He was a little bit different than I thought. So um, he showed me certain details of, this, of certain details of the story. I'll probably leave off for right now. He showed me um, three possibility or three ways that I could basically lose my soul. And I was a little bit surprised because I was like, if he is showing me how I could lose my soul, then maybe he's not bad. But he was pure evil. And what made him pure evil was the amount of power that he had. He was pure evil. And he showed me what happens, what it really looks like if your vision is expanded, if you're seeing more than the limitations of human eyes, of when you make certain decisions and when you do certain things. To him, losing your soul made you the lowest form on earth. It made you less than that. It made you the most insignificant, imbecile, dumbest person, dumbest a thing imaginable because the fact that you would trade an immortal soul for like 15 cents basically it was just completely idiotic it would be like if you're a multi-trillionaire and you're at a gumball machine and the gumballs are 10 cents and you show someone your bank account and you're like i really want this gumball i'll give you my entire bank account for 10 cents for this gumball and they're like okay like what you can't just wait until you get home or you can't just like that doesn't make any sense, but like that's how that would be the equivalent. Selling your soul is just like he looked at it like just pure, utter stupidity. But at the same time, it was like, well, hey, yeah. And so he showed me three like uh, examples of how people lose their soul, and they were pretty significant. I mean, it was one of those things where you would know, you would know, no, no. Um, but he showed me these things and it was a little bit kind of not what I thought because some of these things were you know things that were immoral but it was almost like well why would he be against immorality it wasn't that he was against it but at the time I thought I thought he wanted you I thought he was going to encourage you to do it yeah so I was a little bit surprised and then he showed me because he knew I wanted information. He showed me basically where it all began. And so he took me into, or he, not even took me, he basically put on display, like watching a movie in a way, a castle or something like that, probably somewhere in Europe, medieval days, maybe like the 1500s or something like that. And he was showing me that this is where it began. There was some type of thing that was done or some type of deal or a pack that was made. Um, and I just know that out of that castle emitted the most horrific evil and the most devastating cruelties imaginable. And I remember him communicating to me that he wasn't able to give me the full story on what's really going on about, or about what's really going on um, because... It's so bad and it's so dark and it's so devastating that if people knew they could pretty much go into shock immediately and pass on, he would basically have to get me acclimated to it and give it to me, give me little doses of knowledge so I could understand more. But there's no way like in one take you would be able, there's no way that you'd be able to handle the whole thing at one time. Yeah. Um... But I remember when he showed me the castle thing, it was so evil. It was so horrible. It was so horrific. I was like, turn it off, turn it off. I don't, I can't, like, I didn't even want to know what happened. And yeah, basically that was about it. And I was sent back into my body and, um, or I wasn't sent back into my body. Basically that was about it. And I came to, I came to, and um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of that. So that was my first experience. Yeah, is he real? Yeah. But after this experience, I got a little bit, I don't want to say confused, but I became Christian again shortly after that. But I never really, 
had, I guess you could say, a bad experience with that because I felt like, well, he was helping me to a certain extent. He was warning me not to get involved in certain behaviors or in certain things. So maybe he's not that bad. Maybe he was just, you know. So I never really saw him as, um, I, I saw, I kind of wasn't sure. Like, well, maybe he's not bad. Maybe he's good. Like, I like what a Catholic, famous Catholic priest says that he sees Lucifer, Satan, kind of like a knife. You know, he doesn't fear it, but he respects it. And I feel like that's a, a good way of looking at it. But at the same time, yeah, uh, be careful. Don't do anything that'll compromise your soul. Please don't. And I'm going to leave this story at this. I may add a few more details at a certain point. Talk to you later.